Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now over the last two years Russia's trade has moved directly away from Europe has now moved to Asia and particularly towards its BRICS partners there, India and China. Now the real orientation towards the BRICS has an impact on all aspects of Russian trade according to the Russian Ministry of Economic Development. Now the Ministry had previously observed that the introduction of the anti-Russian sanctions by the West had resulted in an increase in the proportion of trade turnover of Russia by the Union countries of the BRICS. And the ministry uh, reports that trade with the BRICS countries grew by 6.3% in the first five months of 2024, 20, uh, with the positive dynamics expected for the rest of the year. Now, it's obvious that Russia's cooperation with the BRICS is evolving. So, what innovations are on the horizon? Well, the real orientation towards the BRICS has involved all sectors of Russian trade in one way or another, from commodities through to agriculture, according to the ministry. Uh, in the current circumstances, we can no longer rely on Western markets, even for those goods that are not subject to sanctions and technically can still be traded. Therefore, the reorientation of trade to Asia and to the BRICS countries, regardless of the size of their economies, is a natural process. Of course, this process isn't without problems, the Ministry noted. It's evident that the significant realignment of the commodities flows in commerce, export and imports has had a serious impact uh, on a lot of companies and the difficulties. However, uh, the Ministry is pleased to report that our BRICS colleagues have provided with a l large level of support, enabling us to achieve a record 28% uh, increase last year over the previous year. And it's evident that the foundations have expanded exp uh, considerably and the trajectory is upwards. <clears throat> now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website seobricksinsight.com to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now, everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. Now, in monetary terms, the most significant growth in exports is to Asia, according to Dmitry Kulikov, who is the director of sovereign ratings at the group Acra. He said in particular in the first half of 2024, the Federal Customs Service reported an increase of $12 billion compared to the same period in 2023, while the actual amount of exports and quantity in all directions were pretty much unchanged. Now, these products are primarily mineral raw materials and processed products, but if you look at the data from 21, uh, 21 onwards, we can see an increase in almost all major categories in both imports and exports. Now, the Russian Direct Investment Fund had previously indicated that it believes that the trade turnover between Russia and um, China could potentially double by 2030, and that's considering it's already doubled between 2020 and 2024. Obviously, there's obstacles on being settlements between the banks have to be eliminated. I mean, the mutual trade volume between Russia and China will be over 250 billion in 2024. Now, following a meeting between Mikhail Mishustin and Premier uh, of China, Li Kuang, the two parties signed an investment cooperation agreement. This has led to a notable increase in the trade volume, although the trade payments uh, system r remains unresolved. Uh, but, but that said, the Western restrictions have actually had no effect on the trade turnover, as other ways of payment have been found, and the trade flow continues unabated. Now, to enhance the cooperation, the BRICS countries are looking to progressively unify their trade regulations, with the members initiating projects with more straightforward ways of doing things. And as part of its BRICS focus, Russia is pursuing a policy of increased settlements in national currencies. Now, the central bank reports that the share of the ruble in payments for exports to Europe has reached a historical maximum of 67%. Now, Russia's dealings with Africa and Asia is already using its national currencies from both countries uh, for 80 and 84% of their tra transactions, respectively. 
Consequently, the importance of the dollar and the euro has diminished. It's on a global scale. It's only trade in Russian Federation, but also in global settlements as a whole. I mean, the proportion of currencies from unfriendly countries in Russia's settlements with Europe for exports fell to 21%, according to the central bank. Now, this represents the lowest figure recorded through the whole time of being recorded, which started in January 2019. I mean, currently, the proportion of transactions conducted in rubles continues to increase. In July, this reached a figure of 66%. The remaining 11% is uh, <coughs> accounted for by other countries. Now, here's a chart. I'll shove it up on the screen now so you can see it, the figures here, and you'll see exactly what I've been going through. Uh, now, according to the central bank data, Settlements for Russia's export in national currencies are increasing with their key partners. In particular, their share in the settlements with Asia grew to 84%. Of those, 33% were in the Russian ruble, with 51% in other countries, include, including the yuan and the rupees. Now, according to Dmitry Berchevsky, who's the Director of Economic Cooperation at the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, it's notes that key partners now account for 90% of the settlements in trade. Now, Europe and Asia have practically swarmed places from before in terms of trade turnover with Russia. <coughs> I mean, Europe's trade uh, share of trade has dropped to 12%, while the latter uh, has grown to 66%. Now, at the same time, China accounts for almost a third of Russia's foreign trade. In addition to energy resources, agricultural products like grain, meat, fish, as well as chemical products, particularly m mineral fertilizer, are showing significant growth to uh, China and other Asian countries such as Vietnam, Thailand, etc. Now, as you're aware, Western countries have introduced an increasing number of sanctions against Russia, which has resulted in the euro and the dollar becoming less acceptable to Russian country, uh, companies. So in light of the potential for secondary sanctions, a number of foreign banks have begun to refuse accept, uh, to accept payments in dollars from Russian companies. And that led to difficulties in 2024. Another factor contributing to the high proportion of settlements in national currencies directly with Europe is that Russia forced the unfriendly countries to pay for their gas in, new, in rubles. Now, the largest export volumes from Russia to Europe are in the energy sector, according to Antonina Levashenko, who's head of the Russian Competence Center. I mean, in January 2023, Russia supplied 587 million uh, euros worth of natural gas to Austria, 504 to Hungary, and 329 million to France. Yet, in total, over the first five months of 2024, Russia exported 15.7 billion worth of products to Europe, and most of that was oil, gas, metals, and fertilizers. Now, Eurostat data shows that European exports to Russia fell by over 50% in the second quarter of this year, and that was down from an already particularly low level. I mean, you look at deliveries from uh, Russia decreased by 87% and the trade turnover between Russia and the European Union has reached its lowest point since September 1999 to amount to 4.9 million billion. Now do you remember Russia was almost on its dead on its feet in 1999. So there's a growing preference for Russian partners to make payments in national currencies and in international transactions. And the use of digital currencies from the national banks, including cryptocurrency, stable coins, and a single currency for the BRICS plus countries is being considered. And we'll know more about that from the conference in Kazan. Now, the creation of the currency is being discussed, and the use of natural, national currencies in settlements allows for the creation of a fairer world where all countries are equal opportunities for development and they're not slaves to the dollar. The wire now already accounts for 75% of all Russian trade uh, turnover. It's convenient for Russia to do payments, not only in rubles, but in the wire, to p immediately pay for import expenses. It's already got the money from their exports. So in addition to oil and gas, Russia supplies China with lots of coal, copper, precious metals and aluminium. Now it's anticipated that Russia's trade turnover with Africa is growing and it will continue to grow and it will reach 50 to 60 billion by 2030 up from 20 
4.5 billion in 2020. Now, a quarter of Russia's exports uh, are wheat, etc., while oil products also make up a similar amount. So there you have it. That's what Russia is focused on, Asia and the global south, leaving the EU to drown in its own hubris, hypocrisy and economic misery. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Now, don't forget the comment section. I do love reading the comment section. I do love responding to you and I do love getting them. So please keep the comments coming and I'll keep responding to you all. Thank you, friends. Always a pleasure. Take care.